So I want to say something uh, about epistemology and ontology and the way that they're related and uh, much like particles at a distance can't really be separated and understood independently of one another. Uh, but I don't want to get too much into the actual quantum interpretations, though I agree with you that the EPR experiment's leaving out... Um, well, no, it's not leaving out anything. It's, it's doing what you said. It's assuming that Newtonian physics is true, and then because of that, uh, saying that quantum physics is impossible. Um, but I would say, even according to Einstein's own work uh, in relativity theory, um, space isn't the empty vacuum that Newton assumed. That doesn't mean it's uh, this ether, but uh, it's, th it's the ground of being in Einstein's physics, I would think. It, it's, uh, first of all, one with time, so distance is an illusion of time, or time is an illusion of distance. But you, you can't separate time and distance. Um, there's no space without movement across distance. So even Einstein's theory is kind of intertangled in his way, much like uh, particles in quantum physics. But uh, back to ontology and epistemology, you know, to justify any ontological picture or understanding of what the world is, you need first to have, you know, some kind of a method to, uh, to come to know it. You need an epistemological framework. Um, you need to describe how it is that you come to have knowledge of reality before you can define reality. Um, so if we're going to be scientists and say that reality is what uh, experiments reveal, and we need only measure the world in order to declare it physical, which is basically what uh, the EPR paper assumed. Um, something is physical if it, if it can be measured, if it can be mathematically predicted. Uh, and th in this sense, it's carrying the classical Enlightenment interpretation of science uh, back to Galileo, who said, uh, you know, the purpose of science is to measure everything measurable and to make everything not measurable measurable, and anything outside of that measurability is not real, it's not physical. Um, and I think uh, what this assumes is that our epistemology sort of becomes, uh, it's neglected in this picture. We don't pay attention to the assumptions we're making about what knowledge must amount to if reality is all that can be measured, if reality is essentially number. Um, how is it that we come to know these numbers, these eternal forms? I mean, it's a supernatural kind of uh, epistemology, if you ask me. Saying that there's some kind of um, formal language uh, composing the world and available to our minds means, uh, well, it's begging the question, you know, what is the epistemology behind this? Uh, and I think it's, it's a theological epistemology. It's the belief that one can know the mind of God, which is, you know, synonymous with know the formal structure of reality in a literal sense as something that you could write as an equation. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'll just, I'll just stop at, at, at that and, uh, look forward to, uh, your refutation of the EPR experiment. Um, thanks for these, uh, quantum physics videos. I love them.